A new study suggests one of the most frequently cited metrics showing the severity of the pandemic may not be as meaningful as previously thought. Hospitalization statistics are often used as a reliable indicator of how bad COVID is at any given point in time. Experts have said death statistics lag behind actual infection rates, and case counts depend too heavily on who elects to get themselves tested for the virus. But the study's preliminary findings suggest many patients characterized as having been hospitalized for COVID may have actually wound up in the hospital for completely unrelated reasons. The study, which is not yet peer-reviewed, found that in thousands of cases at more than 100 VA hospitals, 36% of the COVID-positive patients admitted between March 2020 and January 2021 had very mild or no symptoms. Between January and June of this year, that percentage jumped to 48%. David Zweig, author of a forthcoming book on COVID, wrote in The Atlantic that, quote, in other words, the study suggests that roughly half of all the hospitalized patients showing up on COVID data dashboards in 2021 may have been admitted for another reason entirely, or had only a mild presentation of disease. The authors of the study used VA hospitals in their analysis because the system requires COVID testing for every patient admitted. Not all hospitals test all their inpatients for the virus. However, universal COVID testing could be one reason why patients who come to the hospital for unrelated reasons end up getting classified as COVID patients. Other studies involving pediatric hospitalizations have found similar levels of disparity between the number of COVID hospitalizations recorded and the number of children actually receiving treatment for a severe case of COVID. The findings call into question a way of measuring the pandemic that scientists and journalists have favored for months. They also raise questions about public policy that may have been based on flawed assumptions about the pandemic's severity. Sarah Westwood for The Washington Examiner.